Hey, Carl, everyone. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Scooby Dooby Doo, and this is where we introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Faith Ralphs, and she's going to be making healthy Halloween treats that are kid tested and mother approved. Please welcome to the show. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Uh oh, Roinch, Roinch. Hi, Faith. <laughs> it's actually me. Okay. Thank you for the warm welcome, Scooby Doo. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for doing this special Halloween show. And I know you're going to be making some incredible treats. And before you do, since you're a mom of kids, what do you do for Halloween? Uh, we. We don't make candy like this forbidden thing. We love to go trick or treating because kids just love it so much. You know, it's the collecting that's so fun. And so we go trick or treating. And then um, I have said that they can have as many pieces of candy as they are old. So like I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. I'm not, not gonna give my one-year-old one piece of candy because she doesn't know. But um, anyway, they have that. And then we usually like hand out the rest of their candy to people who come to our house. And um, I've also thought about the idea of a switch witch, which is a common tradition where you take the candy and um, the next day, like they put their candy out on the porch and the next day it's switched out with a toy that they want instead. Or you could do like, you know, healthier treats like dates and mango and stuff like that. Um, so switching out the candy for something else, I might start doing that. That sounds great. You know, I didn't know what to give. So somebody suggested, tell me about this, because I don't know, like, what kids like what. Pokemon cards. What do you think of that? Yeah, great idea. I love to hand out toys and non-food items. And kids love those things. Because they get so much candy, they want the toys. Like, little tattoos or little bouncy balls, um, kazoos, bubbles, all those things. Pokemon well, cards are awesome. And, and just in case, I did find something that I feel that I can give to kids because I would eat it. I found them at Costco at a great price. They're called That's It Mini Fruit Bars, and they're just fruit. And so in this way, if there's leftovers, it won't be tempting, and I can just eat these. And so that's what I'm giving out today. They're so yummy, and they even have Halloween decorated ones. That's It Company made little Halloween packages for them. Darn, because these are the ones I, I got, but that's okay. Well, great. So tell us what you're going to make today because your food is so fun. Um, so I'm going to make a little Halloween snack board. So I have this, this a black cookie tray, any kind of board you have. And I'm going to show you how fun it can be to make it um, halloween -y. So down here, I have some carrots and cucumbers. And you just get like kind of a fat carrot and slice it on the diagonal to make some little carrot ghosts. And you don't need special cookie cutters or special Halloween things. You're just using a knife here. And then you just cut the bottom flat. And then we're gonna make a little fluted bottom, um, just a little zigzag shape. And then I'm gonna use um, a reusable straw to poke out some eyes. It's almost like you're making a Halloween charcuterie board. Yeah, exactly. So you have these little carrot ghosts and we're gonna put those on our board. That's adorable and that was so easy. Yeah, so easy, no special equipment required. And then with the rest of this carrot, the skinnier part, I'm just gonna cut it into carrot sticks. And we're gonna use this for a little hummus and carrot spider web on our board. What are your kids going to dress up as for Halloween? Um, my daughter's going to be a, a butterfly and my son a dragon and my little baby a bumblebee. And um, they're very excited about their costumes. I want to dress up too, but I haven't even thought of anything yet. <laughs> Don't do Scooby-Doo because let me tell you, it's really hot in here. <laughs> I bet. It's nice in the winter. And yeah. Um, costume but you're in California I'm in Idaho so we, we do kind of like those warmer costumes so you anyway. could you could hand out baked potatoes if you're in Idaho yeah, that's a thing actually kids actually like getting potatoes there's a little there's a Facebook post that's kind of like viral going around about someone who put a bucket of candy and a potato and they said that over 25 times kids chose a potato over candy 
That's really interesting. I would I would feel good about giving potatoes. I know it's just kind of something that's different. Kids like something that's different than the normal candy, you know. Um, so for this little um spider web, we're just gonna put some little carrots like this. And then I put some hummus in a pastry bag like you use for frosting. Yeah, and we're just you know what you're gonna do now. That's brilliant. I've seen it done with chocolate and pretzels, but this is so much healthier. Yeah, and honestly, kids really seem to like carrots and hummus. At least my kids really love it. Yeah, that is so creative what you're doing. Is it a potato museum in Idaho? I don't know why I think there is. Um, there's an Idaho museum that might have like a potato display or something, but I haven't heard of an exact potato museum. Oh, my pastry bag got clogged, probably with a piece of garlic or something. But anyway, you get the idea. A little hummus and carrot spider web. You could do a little like black olive spider on there if you wanted. And then with our celery, we're going to cut a few little stems that we're going to put into mandarin oranges for pumpkins. So just a tiny little piece of celery. And then with the rest, you can make like little monster ants on a log. So the baking aisle in most grocery stores has some little candy eyes. I have some, but I can't find them. <laughs> and I don't say that they're for eating because they're pure sugar, but they're just for decoration. And you just pick them off when you're about to eat them. But they make very, they make things very cute. So you can put um, peanut butter on a, some celery and then put some little like eyes on there. And it makes it look like a little monster. Um. You can also just use raisins or whatever you have. Just all you really need is a bunch of yummy food on a tray. And it makes it fun to just pick what you want. So we'll have all these things on our snack tray. And then I want to show you how to make some little um kind of skeleton or alien looking cucumber slices. So you use your straw again to poke three holes. You know, like that and then you kind of angle out the sides and it looks kind of like a little skeleton so I think this is precious and you know a lot of the things you're doing a kid could do maybe not the knife part but certainly the pokey part with the straw yeah exactly and kids I mean after a certain point they really are pretty good with knives and it is an important skill to learn how to use knives and cook and stuff. I think that teaching children to prepare healthy food is just as important as learning to read and write. That's so something you're gonna have to do every day the rest of your life. So it's really important to get them in the kitchen and not like terrified of, of things like, you know, a knife at, after a certain point and a blender and stuff like that. They need to learn and figure out how to make food that they enjoy that's good for them. So we're gonna have these little vegetables on our tray. And then with this part of the cucumber that I didn't peel all the way, we're going to use it as a little pumpkin stem for um, a bowl of hummus that looks like a pumpkin. So I'll show you how to do that. I made homemade hummus. I have my favorite recipe in my kid's cookbook, which I'll show you in a minute. But you just load up a bowl with hummus and kind of Spread it out so that there's um, kind of some pumpkin lines in it, like a pumpkin ridge. And then put this little stem at the top. It looks a little bit like a pumpkin. So we're going to set that on our... I bet you're great at arts and crafts. <laughs> I'm actually... Um, it's a work in progress for sure. I'm always looking at... Um, like unhealthy ideas and kind of trying to healthify them. So we're gonna put our pumpkin on here with our little ghosts, aliens. I mean, even an adult like that, it just makes it so fun and appetizing. Yeah, exactly. You kind of got to compete with all the sugar out there. You know, you can't just give your kids steamed broccoli while they watch their friends eat fruit snacks. You have to make your food fun and colorful too and appealing. And I promise they will eat it. If you just set this in front of them, any kid's going to eat this. Um, 
it's funny that I always get on this show at the fall time. I was on your show last fall I too. Know. So funny. And, and Dr. Furman was on yesterday. He is not a fan of sugar for kids or anybody really. I know, right? It's overwhelming though, how common it is and how everywhere your kids go, people hand them sugar. And so you've got to kind of crowd it out <clears throat> with the more nutritious stuff. <laughs> um, them. So <clears throat> The, thing now, is, the kind of things you can make without sugar are just as good if people just knew, you know? I totally agree. <clears throat> I am going to make, I'm sorry, I need a good drink. I just ate a little bit of hummus and it's stuck in my throat. <laughs> I, I love how your kitchen is decorated. With the bats and the little gourds. That's so cute. I tried to make it spooky for this. <clears throat> so now speaking of candy and how it can be, healthy stuff can be just as yummy as candy. I am making some little spiders now. And I just made an energy ball bite that you can use your favorite recipe, any recipe really. This is um, a cup of dates with a half a cup of oats and a half a cup of nuts. You can use any kind, walnuts, almonds, or seeds even. Um, and then a little bit of vanilla powder and cinnamon. And they taste kind of like a salted caramel ball because dates have that caramely taste, you know? So I'm just gonna roll a few of these and we're going to turn them into little spiders. I never buy processed snacks, but <laughs> I bought a bag of pretzels for this as a special occasion to make these little spider eggs or legs. And if you, anyone has a non-pretzel idea, I will take it, but I couldn't think of anything. Um, so as a special occasion, we got some little spider leg pretzels. So you just use the curved part of a pretzel and put eight in. Let's see how I'm making this. Um, and they are just so yummy, especially with the salt from the pretzels with the caramel date. It's kind of like a salted caramel yeah, energy. That's, bit. A, that's a tough one. I'm running the, in my brain thinking what else could be curved that's like a fruit or a vegetable. And I'm having trouble thinking of something right now. I know. I thought like carrot peels, but they're just not rigid enough. Rigid enough. And uh, that, that's a, that's all right. Maybe, maybe what somebody in the audience will figure it out, but I think that's fine, but it's, it sure is cute. Yeah, it is really cute. And, um, if there's no oil or sugar in pretzels, at least. So. That, I think it's fine. And I think it's it's precious. <laughs> and then I'm just using two little sunflower seeds for the eyes. So we're going to fill up our little tray with these little spiders. I mean, who wouldn't want to eat that, you know? I know, right? I agree. <laughs> so we're getting going on this, but we're not done. We're going to make some little banana ghosts. You've probably seen this idea all over the internet. It's a good one, though. You just cut half a banana and then you use, um, I usually use two raisins for eyes, but I can't find my raisins. I think we're totally out right now. I'm just going to use two little chocolate chips and um, actually, you know, hey, hey Faith, I don't know if they have it where you live, but and this is something that I dreamed of when I went to culinary school over 20 years ago, a date sweetened chocolate chip. And that's something you can actually buy now in stores. That's great. What's the brand? Who? H U. Oh, Hugh's chocolate. Yeah, I have heard of that. Have you tried them? I tasted one. I don't want to be eating chocolate because it gives me a migraine, but I just wanted to see if they were good and they're fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Really good. Yeah, I'm so thankful for dates because it helps you to kind of compete with all the sugar out there. Dates are so good though. I mean, they're like, have you ever tried the Bari date, B-A-H-R-I? I mean, that literally is so sweet. It tastes like craft caramel candy. I totally agree. There are some people who tell me, but I don't like dates and I just don't understand. Really? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I eat it plain and I'm like, that's like eating a sugar cube, you know, like use it to sweeten your food then and don't eat them plain if you don't like that and use it, to, you know, in things instead of just straight, so exactly okay so we have a few little spiders right here and our banana ghosts and then um you can get these little mini peppers and put a little bit of hummus on them with those little 
candy eyes to make like little monsters, but it's very cute. I'm going to put them around here. And it's just kind of like a hummus platter. You dip the, the carrots and the cucumbers and the mini peppers in the hummus. And um, you can use pretzels as hummus dip too. That's a really yummy popular snack with kids. It's hummus and pretzels. I have not seen those eyes in my store. Would it be in the baking aisle? Yeah, look at the candy sprinkles. You know, not a place that you ever normally go. <laughs> I right. never go. Yeah, but that is such a cool idea. Do you have an air fryer? I do, yeah. Have you ever air fried those mini peppers? They're divine. Oh, that sounds good. Just are, oh my. I mean, they're actually great raw. They're just so yummy. But air fry, just, you know, 20 minutes at 400 or 15 minutes at 370, depending on your air fryer. They are delicious. Just plain, just peppers. And, and honestly, when, oh my God, they just turn into just this yummy, yummy treat. Wow. I had no idea. I'm going to try that probably today. We had all those beautiful mini peppers. Yeah, exactly. Oh all right. I got a free. I got a free. <laughs> I think I'm turning into a dog. <laughs> Do you wear your Scooby-Doo costume every Halloween? I do. You know, it was kind of expensive, you, you know, 20 years ago. So I really am getting, well, I mean, not, it was a hundred dollars, but I mean, you know, I'm getting my money, I'm getting my money's worth out of it. You know, this is like the 20th year I've, I've worn it. So yeah, that's $5 a year. That's a great price for a costume. Not so bad, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an investment. <laughs> and then you just put a little piece of celery in the, your oranges for little pumpkins. And these are like candy too. You know, they're individually wrapped, brightly colored without any dyes. And they're just sweet for kids and adults. I feel like it's nature's Halloween candy. You could just pass out with this perfect little biodegradable wrapper. I know uh, it literally looks like a pumpkin. You know what I've seen people do? Maybe you have too. They take those cuties and they leave the peel on and then they take a Sharpie market and they, marker and they draw the face on it for like a jack-o'-lantern. I was just about to do that. Oh. And then we'll hide these little pumpkins like around the yard. My kids were just doing it this morning since I had these out. And they'll draw jack-o'-lantern faces on them and have and hide them in the yard for each other and do like a little Easter egg hunt, but like a pumpkin hunt, you know? And they love doing that. They'll do it over and over. They hide them, find them, hide them, find them. And it's great. So that is adorable. Anyway, um, I could spend more time on this, but we'll move on. Anyway, I have this recipe with better photos on my blog. So you can go see the step-by-step -step instructions, including the recipe for these little spider bites and um, more ideas on how to make a fun and healthy like Halloween charcuterie board. That is brilliant. If you want to send me a photo of that, I could even make it the thumbnail if you want. It's just so precious. Yeah, perfect. That's great. Um, all right, now I'm going to show you how to make some really yummy little pumpkin pie bites. I personally love the flavors of pumpkin pie. And these are a really yummy treat. If you're not eating candy and you want to eat a treat, this is the treat for you. Um, so you need a food processor and some fresh dates, some soft dates. Let's see. I'll do this one right here. Where do you buy your dates? Um, I usually just get mine in the bulk bins of my grocery store, but I've also ordered from Azure Standard, which is a company that gives you like bulk ingredients. And I love Azure Standard. I get a lot of stuff like beans and lentils and dates and nuts. That way I always have them on hand and I'm not constantly buying little bags of things. You have Costco in Idaho? Yes, I thankfully live about five minutes from a Costco, which is really convenient. <laughs> that's um, that's where I get my dates. They seem to have really good prices. Yeah, they do. I agree. Do you, do you have Trader Joe's? Um, I have a Trader Joe's about a half an hour from me. So I go there sometimes. So to make these little balls, you will need a cup of dates and make sure that the pit is out. And these are soft medjool ones, but you could honestly use any dates. If your dates are hard, just soak them in a little bit of hot water first. And um, you're gonna be blending them up, so they'll soften up. So we're gonna put a cup of dates in. And we've, we're gonna process those until they're clumped into a ball. So they're really blended up. 
Hello, everyone. What are you going to be at Halloween? What are you giving out? This is a very dangerous day for people that are suffering with food addictions because a lot of slips happen. So remember the only the only bite you can refuse is the first one. <laughs> then we're going to add a half a cup of walnuts or any nuts that you like. And a half a cup of oats or I have grinded up oats already, oat flour. It's cheaper to grind them yourself. I was at the store yesterday and I realized they had millet flour and almond flour, but it's just easier to buy the whole food and just grind it. Exactly. That's what I always do. It's an extra step. And some people just get overwhelmed by the difficulty of things, but the harder things are, it just means the more extraordinary your results will be. And we yeah, we it's, it's just a lot cheaper. Almonds are cheaper than almond flour. Whole millet is cheap. And also the thing is, is if you buy the millet whole, you can also cook it as millet. Whereas if you buy the millet flour, you can't then, you know, have, so I like to buy everything whole. I got this idea from you, vanilla bean powder instead of vanilla extract. So good. And I've heard of it before until you, so. Um, all right. Oh, and then the pumpkin, of course. A fourth a cup of pumpkin. Whenever you have a little bit of pumpkin left over, I have tons of ideas on how to use that last little bit. Like if you were to bake pumpkin muffins or like a pumpkin soup or something. Um, on my Instagram, I have several reels about how to use just a few tablespoons of pumpkin. And it is just packed with vitamin A. And so it's a great thing to add to lots of things. You're going to shape these into little pumpkins. So they will look very cute. Just get them going. And the taste is incredible. Anything with dates and walnuts, especially, just tastes so good. And we've got those pumpkin spice, spices, you know, the cinnamon and the ginger and the nutmeg, and it is just delicious. What does the yellow sign say by you? Oh, this is my cookbook. So I want to show you this. Oh, no. that is that's adorable. Yep, it is um, on Amazon or the publisher's website where you can buy one, get one free. So I highly recommend hopping on that sale during the month of November um, because you can buy one and get one for a friend for a gift and cook things together. I have a lot of really fun fall recipes in here as well. Um, I made one last year on your show, if you want to look it up, if anyone watching wants to see that one, it was a pumpkin peanut butter dip for apples, which is really good. There's also apple nachos with some date caramel, which is really fun for kids. Thinly sliced apples are like chips. They are so good. And then I have some little dirt cups. Most dirt cups use crushed Oreos and like gummy worms, but this is a dirt made of like dates and, and almonds and flaxseed. Really healthy stuff, but so yummy still. And you can make these kind of spooky with like um, oranges and make the Halloween colors. I also have some pumpkin chocolate chip cookies in here, which are fun to make um, all through the fall and winter. Um, all kinds of really fun desserts, but that's just the dessert section. We have breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, salad dressings. And I chose the simplest recipes with the most common, easy to find ingredients so that kids can cook without feeling overwhelmed and parents too, honestly. So, I mean, what adult doesn't want simple meals? All right, I'm gonna show you how to make these little pumpkin bites. So we have our pumpkin pie mixture and you just roll it into a ball and then, um, I'm using two little mini 
chocolate chips for eyes and a little mouth. So we're kind of making a little jack-o-lantern. And then we'll use a little piece of a walnut for the stem to make a little pumpkin shape. Sometimes you wanna gift something to like a neighbor or a friend who doesn't eat the way you do. And you wanna make them something, but you don't wanna go buy you know ingredients that you don't buy to make them a normal tasting treat. And I feel like this is something that you could give that no one would um, balk at and be like, ooh, that's weird. Cause I mean, it, maybe it is weird for them to eat dates and walnuts for a dessert, but it's gonna taste so good that they will not hesitate. And then you just put a little walnut stem in the top and it's a little pumpkin pie jack-o-lantern. That's so cute. Do you put it like in a little candy paper or something or a box? Yeah, a little like cup, mini cupcake wrapper or just a little plate of these. And they honestly are just so, so yummy. Like those pumpkin pie spices, I just love those flavors. So if somebody doesn't like that, then that you know they're eating way too much sugar. <laughs> yeah. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a fun little treat that you could even have for breakfast with your family, especially in the fall when it's pumpkin season. And it's a pumpkin mug cake. And this is a very fun baking project with kids because it just takes a few minutes. You have instant results. You know, it bakes in the microwave for 90 seconds. So it's kind of like an instant gratification treat because it's so quick. Um, and kids just love to make little miniature things. I don't know if any of you had an easy bake oven when you were little, but you bake this tiny, tiny little cake with a light bulb. <laughs> oh my God. That's what started this whole journey for me is when I was seven years old at Hanukkah, I got an easy bake oven and I haven't stopped baking since. <laughs> exactly. So this is what, that's kind of what we're doing right now is making a little tiny cake very quickly, just like the easy bake oven. I know so how the light bulb could bake the cake. I know, right? If it's small enough. Um, that is just so adorable that you started baking with an easy bake oven. I had one too for a while when I was little. I just loved it. I mean, that's like I'm just obsessed with desserts and I still am. I don't eat them often anymore, but I, I still love making them because desserts make people so happy. I know, right? It's just a fun little thing. That's kind of what started this whole journey for me too, was I loved to bake when I was young, especially like 9, 10, 11. My family was calling me Martha Stewart because I just loved to cook things. I like to make all, all kinds of food and good meals too, but of course desserts were my favorite just because they're more fun. And um, every Sunday I'd be making brownies or cookies and I started to learn that that's not good for you, but I still wanted that fun experience of baking all the time. And so I have just enjoyed figuring out how to make healthy food fun. And um, that's what started all this for me too. Yeah. Do you, do you, you're going to, you give me show notes uh, and do you have that link so that the people can get uh, two for one for your book? Cause that'd be great. They can keep one and give one as a holiday gift. Kind of freezing up a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I said, do you have a link for how they can get a two for one with your book? I was saying it would be a oh, great because yeah. then they could buy one for themselves and one could be a holiday gift for somebody else with kids. Exactly. Yes, that link is in the show notes. Thank you. That's perfect. And then, um, so in this little mug, I mixed a fourth a cup of oat flour with two tablespoons of pumpkin and then a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm going to put in a teaspoon of pumpkin spice. This is a blend that I made myself that um, recipes in my cookbook, the kids cookbook. And then um, we want um, two tablespoons of maple syrup for the sweetness, but there's no fat in this um, mug cake. It's just pumpkin. That's great. And Could I use date syrup? Cause I don't have maple syrup at home. Yeah, that's a great improvement. Yeah, you can totally use date syrup too. I need to get get into that. You know, that, did you know that my favorite brand, which is organic, called I Love Date Lady, they sell it at Walmart now. Oh, really? Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, it's so much easier. I mean, I have a code for the Date Lady, but it, it you could get it at Walmart now. That's amazing. Oh, Walmart's open like till midnight yeah. when you have a date a date syrup emergency. You can. <laughs> 
All right, so that's all this is. You can add a little vanilla powder or vanilla if you want, but just oat flour, pumpkin, maple syrup, and pumpkin spice and baking powder. And then I'm going to um, sprinkle a few chocolate chips on top, but you don't have to do that. It's really yummy by itself. Or you could do some walnuts on top um, just to make it extra fancy on top. And then we're going to microwave this for just a minute and a half. And I can't wait for you to see how it turns out. That is brilliant. I know, I know, I already know some people are going to go, I don't have a microwave. How can I bake it? Well, it'll take a lot longer than night. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is mostly for kids who want to cook in the microwave, but you can bake it for about 20 minutes in the oven, probably about 315, a little ramekin. But um, at that point, you might as well make a whole batch of things and make, make muffins or something and then freeze them if you're going to be. If you're gonna go to that, yeah, this is cool. I uh, the mug, I love this mug cake idea. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. cakes. I also make a banana mug cake, and um, it's the same thing, but just with banana instead of pumpkin. And it's just like a fun little single serving thing that kids can learn to make all by themselves, so that you don't have to get up and make them a snack. Can... It's great if somebody wants a sweet treat for portion control, because if you bake a whole cake, you're going to be tempted to eat a whole cake. But this is perfect. Exactly. Just look at the fun of making something. It's really, with, with kids especially, it's just the experience of, of baking and cooking. It's not really about the end result. So you might as well be making something that is good for you anyway. You just have to make it fun like that. I agree. That's the best thing is to make it fun for kids and let them get in as much involved as they can. Have you seen those things? Oh, we were visit recently visiting a former guest on the show, Dr. Rick Dean and his kid is too. And they've got this thing. So like he can cook with them. It's like this kind of riser, but he's safe. So he won't fall off. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. No. It's just, it's really cool. It's not like a high chair, but it's like a, a thing. So a kid could be counter level with you and help you because if they're two, they can't they can't reach the counter yet if they're two years old, you know? I really wanted to get something like that. My kids are always on stools, but um, yeah, I'll go, I think they're called learning towers. Yeah, it's exactly. Like and it's good because it's like, it's safe because like they can't fall out of it. Like a stool, they could technically fall off, but this is like, it's like their own little podium, if you will. It was very adorable. Exactly. And the more they're just right by your side, um, they just learn so much from you. If you want great kids, you have to try to become great yourself because your kids are going to do what you do, especially while they're young, you know, before they think for themselves as much. And if you want your kids to eat healthy, like you personally have to eat that way. If you want them to cook from scratch, you personally have to do that. And um, they, they really do eventually mimic what you do. And it's really meaningful to watch them develop healthy habits. All right, I'm getting a plate so that you can see this mug cake outside of the mug, but it just rose up and baked so well. It's basically a bowl of oatmeal, but it's more fun than that. But it just pops, pops right out after 90 seconds. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it popped out. You So you don't have, oh, wait, say something so I can see it. You see the shape? Yeah, it just pops right out. That's just amazing. You had a cake in less than two minutes. No. And the texture is incredible, honestly. Like, it's a great little crumb in there. Oat flour works great for this kind of thing. Um, you could use any flour, probably. Like, I would imagine whole wheat flour would work well, or I don't know. But oat flour is gluten-free, and it's whole grain, and we just love oat flour. We use it a lot. So. I mean, you technically could eat that for breakfast. There's nothing bad in it. I agree. If you skip the chocolate chips, especially, it's absolutely low fat, um, low added sugar. It's a whole grain, the pumpkin in there, and it just tastes really yummy. Sometimes I'll pour um, like some soy milk on top of it in the mug and just kind of eat it like cake with milk. But anyway, we have our Halloween tray, <clears throat> our pumpkin pie bites, and our pumpkin mug cake. And I hope that gives a lot of you parents out there some fun ideas. <clears throat> You are, you are brilliant. I am so happy you did this show on Halloween because I mean, I was struggling to think about what we could put on and these are just fabulous ideas and they can take variations of that, these ideas for the other holidays, you know? I bet, I bet you could do your tray with turkey shapes or, or something that's, that's more Halloween-y for, for thanks, you know, that's, you know what I mean? Like they, what you're teaching, they can do for every holiday. It doesn't have to be all about junk, 
you know? You can be a fun mom or fun parent without giving your kids loads of sugar. <laughs> that is great. Well, thank you so much. And tell us the best way. You're, it's in the show notes where to buy your books. Where do you like to hang out with people the most? Uh, my favorite is Instagram stories. Um, so yeah, come follow me on Instagram. I have a lot of reels about how to get more nutrition into your kids, how to make cooking more quick and simple for you know busy people. Um, and then my cookbook, I have several eBooks on my website about 20 minute meals that are all whole food, plant-based. I have a course about tofu. If you ever have questions about tofu, I answer them. I have a new protein ebook coming out soon, just about higher protein recipes that are whole food plant-based with no like added protein powder and stuff like that. So that's coming soon. Um, Maybe yeah. do, you, do you teach any classes either virtually or in person? I have for different organizations like PB and SG. And then I, I'm on the team of another awesome organization called Plant Wise. Plant W H Y S, like your why for eating plants. And I do videos for them as well on all things whole food, plant based, cooking tips, stuff like that, transitioning your diet to eat more nutrient dense. So that's another place to find me is the Plant Wise Instagram or the Plant Wise membership. So I do courses and classes for them. That's great. Well, you're very creative. Thank you so much, Faith. I hope you'll come back again. You have such wonderful ideas. Thank you so much, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> My pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Weekly. Please come back tomorrow with 10 a.m. Pacific time for Kathy Hester. This is Scooby-Doo signing off. Happy Halloween, everyone. Bye-bye.